Hello and welcome to The View from the African Regional Conference 2015. I'm James King, the Banker's Regional Editor, and I'm joined today by Dr. Lyle White, who is the Director for the Centre of the Dynamic Markets at the Gordon Institute of Business Science. Lyle, welcome. How are you doing, Jen? Very well, thank you. Now, much of your work, obviously, is focused around this concept of dynamic markets. But how would you define a, a dynamic market, and how does it differ from other sort of categories of economic uh, classification? Well, it's an interesting question because um, we have become uh, troubled, not, maybe not troubled, but just uh, we, we challenge in the whole notion of emerging markets and, and how to actually find an empirical foundation to look at uh, how these markets, these new markets, these new growth drivers uh, are different from those that exist before. So I think in short they are complex markets, they, uh, they are markets that are not homogenous by any means, they are often dominated by or, or there is real economic growth, exciting uh, economic growth uh, that you see that does uh, prevail across these markets. They tend to have advanced both politically, economically and even uh, socio-politically uh, um, in, in every respect. And in that sense we look at institutions. Institutions are paramount in our understanding of dynamic markets. And to what extent has this sort of, uh, category uh, been applied now to, to markets in sub-Saharan Africa and how much has the conversation around sort of Africa's economic growth changed uh, in recent years? Well I, well, I think what is really important there is the, the, um, the burning question of whether African markets are indeed now, by our definition, dynamic markets. Uh, at Gibbs, um, we have developed a dynamic market index, we call it by the acronym uh, DMI, and we measure um, according to six pillars, six pillars of dynamism uh, that measure the, you know, the dynamism and the, um, the vibrancy, if you like, of institutions and how these institutions have evolved to, to enhance competitive performance. Now going back to your question, um, how do African economies fare? And uh, to be quite Frank on this one, um, African economies are advancing, there are structural changes, but they are not advancing as quickly as others. We call them, most of which, we, we, most of them we call them catch-up markets. The, one or two exceptions include the likes of perhaps Mauritius and maybe even Botswana, which we know have got uh, more advanced uh, institutional frameworks than, than other African economies. But some of the bigger ones, those that we are think, or that we are we thinking are advancing very, very quickly, need to do a lot more work at, at uh, developing their, their dynamic foundation of institutional reform. Okay, so another area of focus has been uh, uh, the idea around African sort of regional economic integration, but also Africa's uh, connections with the rest of the world. And you've recently uh, published some research sort of covering this topic. Uh, what did you find there? Yeah, oh, so I, I like your reference to connectedness over integration. This is an obsession that I have academically that uh, we are constantly doing work on regional integration and, and integration of countries with each other and with the world. Uh, whereas this focus of this research that you, that you talk about, it's really looking at, African, at building an African uh, integration index. And despite the, the integration in that title, it really does focus on the, the real connectedness between African economies with each other and with the rest of the world. Um, and we measure this connectedness by the flow of, of basically goods, trading goods, uh, capital, information and people. Ironically, despite, uh, despite us being economists, we found that people, that the movement of people between borders was the biggest driver of regional integration of all the elements that we measured. Now, obviously, you, you found there were some, some problems in this research in terms of developing greater integration between Africa's uh, economies. Um, how do you address that over the longer term? That's, well, I mean, that's the, that's the billion dollar question, because how do we actually build greater connectedness that will ultimately build scale among African economies? Because let's face it, they are small economies without scale. We will not realize this rise in African narrative. And in the end, we've got to look at and address how we can enhance connectedness between these countries through infrastructure development, through better flows and through improved flows, and just through certain policies that uh, enable connectedness and integration between African economies. Well, Al, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much, James.